Luxury is something I think that enhances your life. I mean, it could have been the crunchy bar I had 15 minutes ago. That, that luxury only lasted a minute. It could be the bit of extra time you have. I mean, busy people love extra time. What we are doing is enhancing someone's life for a long period because they become, hopefully, the proud owner of a Boodle's Jewel. Um, so they're not enhanced uh, just for 15 minutes or an hour. Hopefully, their, their life is going to be enriched by owning a Boodle's piece of jewellery. Everything we do has to be um, luxurious. The customer service is absolutely crucial um, from the moment a new customer walks into one of our stores. And then they're treated luxuriously by our staff afterwards. We have a lot of events, big tennis events, horse racing events, ballet, which are all sophisticated events in, in very nice environments. A lot of our clients like to come to those. Of course, the product itself, we invest an awful lot of time in making that ultra luxurious. And quite a lot of what we sell is what we call uh, bespoke or special order. We have a team of five designers who will come, come and visit any of our clients, either in their own home or in one of our showrooms. We have nine, nine stores around the country. Um, and so they can book an appointment with one of them and they can really see their piece of jewellery from cradle, um, don't like the expression, to, to grave, because that's when it's around their neck, but um, to when they're wearing it. So, and the whole process in our business, it's not just the owning of the piece that's got to be a luxury, the actual, the actual act of purchasing it has got to be luxurious and indeed that's one of the reasons why people buy luxury goods. Design is crucial. Design is absolutely the centre of everything we do and the sales staff is crucial, our people are crucial and we invest a lot of time uh, with, our, with our staff. We, we're very careful in who we recruit in the first instance and then we do an awful lot of training and we call it, we call it boodleizing people, boodleizing our staff and it often takes them two or three years to be boodleized but once they are they seem to stay with us forever. We are constantly evolving. We have completely reinvented ourselves in the last 20 years. We used to be what is called a, a county jeweller. We sold all sorts of things, none of it made by ourselves. And in the, in the course of the last 20 years, <clears throat> we now design and manufacture everything we sell in our shops. So we have really become not just a retail brand, but a genuine brand. I mean, there is a definite Boodle's look. We launched a Wonderland range, we've launched it every other year since 2008 and it's a collection of about 10 or 12 suites of jewellery that are one-off and will always remain one-off, very designer, not always the easiest to sell because they are so designer, but they demonstrate to our customers and would-be customers our design capability and a lot of people want to buy something quite traditional but they actually want to buy it from a jeweller that they perceive to have um, de high design credential and the, the Ocean of Dreams does exactly that. Each suite is, uh, each of the ten suites is based around a different um, oceanic, if I can use that word, theme from mermaids to, to coral reefs and so on. We have a lot of international clients uh, they come to us here in London. I mean, London has become increasingly cosmopolitan, as, as uh, you will know. Ironically, uh, when the Lehman crash happened in 2008, and a lot of British customers um, sort of uh, were more, more difficult to, to entice into our shops, then London was, has been literally invaded by overseas people because the pound was relatively cheap. They, they regard London as the place to be. We don't sell jewellery as an investment, but it is a fact that diamonds, white diamonds and yellow diamonds and pink diamonds have been an incredible investment over the last 10 to 15 years. The same old laws of supply and demand. Uh, lack of supply, the new mines coming on stream are very expensive to, to extract the, the diamonds from and demand as well as China, you've got the, a lot of the rest of the world to come after that. We've just acquired the shop adjacent to us in Bond Street, so our space in Bond Street is going to triple in size, and that is a huge investment for us. We're a family business. We only play with our own money, so we're not highly geared. We haven't got, uh, we don't want to borrow money, so we grow at our pace. Um, but I see in a couple of years' time what I'd like to happen is for our brand to be franchised in the Middle East and hopefully we will have, will have created the desirable brand here in the UK that franchise, franchise operators in the Middle East want to get hold of. So I think for Middle East, we've looked 
Uh, we've had exhibitions in New York in the last couple of years. We have, um, here we are at the Savoy Hotel in London, uh, we have a showroom here and we pick up a lot of um, American and Canadian customers here because this hotel is Canadian owned, it's owned by Fairmont. So we've got a big following uh, across the pond. We will see, I, mean, I think it's very competitive over there and we are umming and ahhing whether it would be the States or the Middle East, but hopefully one of those places before I'm done and dusted.